Hey everybody, welcome to the special edition, the video version of the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast. I'm Stephanie Laska and I'm here with my co-host. Hey everyone, I'm Tamara Music, professor of sociology and Stephanie's co-host. Welcome to the Dirty Lazy Girl podcast, everybody. If you're not listening here on YouTube, you can also listen just the audio version on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or on my website, DirtyLazyKeto.com. Thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about swimsuit shopping today. Hello. Hello. I'm, I'm not wearing a swimsuit, though, if someone's <laughs> curious. That's no, not happening right now. Me either. And no photos of me or video anywhere. Nope. But of all the clothes I buy, Stephanie, I, I have to say I dread the swimsuit shopping more than any other thing. It's just, it's, ah, I leave depressed. I just feel like I look in the mirror and I just see all these flaws and nothing fits and nothing's flattering. So I'm super glad we're, we're talking about this topic today, Stephanie, because I want to feel better <laughs> about swimsuit shopping and it's coming. It's like right around the corner. Beaches are opening back up. I think that's true. Well, I totally get your angst. I think you're not alone. Most people have gone through that feeling. If they're not feeling that way right now, they felt that way sometime in the past. So I'm pretty sure that you're not alone, right? Thank you. Yeah, I think we've Yay. all been through that. Well, if you've listened to our um, episode listeners about um, to weigh yourself or not, you'll know that sometimes Tamara and I bring different opinions to the table and that's good, right? I think it's important to have a little bit of dialogue and just like the scale, um, well, my opinion is a little bit different. Um, I feel like the swimsuit maybe isn't what we should focus on, even though we're going to offer some makeover tips. For me, the real issue in order to feel good about myself in a swimsuit was to really focus on how I felt about myself and felt about my own body. Because you know what, let's face it, a hundred million times I put on a swimsuit in the past, even when I was a little girl, and there were times where my body was perfect, but I felt horrible, right? So it's not like you're gonna look good one day or look a certain way and then all of a sudden feel differently in a swimsuit. So that's what really wanted me motivated to talk about this issue today because I think it's really complicated. It's kind of like getting on the scale. Um, but anyway, it's taken yeah, me a really I, long, yeah, do you, does that make sense? I know it sounds kind of. It totally makes sense. And so no matter where you are, whether if you're like me and you're just depressed going into the, you know, changing room or no matter how you feel about it, um, you're going to find some great advice today because we put together seven unconventional dirty lazy girl swimsuit makeover tips. So we'll all be leaving with some help with this issue. So let's take a quick break first though, Stephanie. Well, I know our listeners are going to die to know why I have 25 bikinis. So I'm going to be telling them at the end of the episode, okay, Tamara? But okay. I will take that first quick break. Um, so just in time for summer, today's episode is brought to you by the Dirty Lazy Keto Get Started Losing Weight While Breaking the Rules, How I Lost 140 Pounds. And the book is available online and in stores like Walmart, BJ's, Sam's Club, Barnes & Noble, and other bookstores in your community. And check out Dirty Lazy Keto today. Nice. Okay, let's get started with our very first tip, which I've named Get Real. <laughs> um, and by that I mean we need to not just think about how we look, although that's important and we'll get to that. But actually, I think you should talk about function before, um, you know, first. Like, what are you going to use it for? Because the swimsuit is going to differ depending on what you use it for. So like, I like to do lap swimming. So lap swimming, you, but let me tell you, you don't, there's a reason why you don't wear bikinis to lap swim. Because if you dive in, those bikini bottoms fall to your ankles. <laughs> So you don't, you know, so you're going to have more of a one piece. You're going to have a razorback strap, which is great for lap swimming. Um, but then you may want something different. Like if you play with kids on the beach, you might want something pretty, but maybe a little bit so that you're bending over your whole butt doesn't hang out or something, or you may not want a thong for the kids at the beach. But, um, but then what if you want to go with your hubby and look really glamorous 
you know, lounging by the pool. So, so think about what you want to use the suit for first. Well, I've, I've had some pretty epic fails. <laughs> Gonna, some epic fails, like you mentioned about form over function. Um, every year on vacation, Tamara, we go to a water aerobics class. And the first time we went, I was so caught off guard because I showed up in my regular, like, you know, two piece that I bought at Walmart thinking I was all cute. And the first, you know, up and down, up and down in the water aerobics class, I think I had a lot of a lot of things showing up that weren't supposed to show up. So I totally agree with you that um, you really have to pay attention to what you're going to be doing. You know, if you're yeah. at a water park, going down water slides, if you're going to be, you know, cooking at a picnic or doing water aerobics, whatever, you want to pick out a suit that matches the function, right? And in fact, I, well, I don't know about you, but I end up getting two or three suits because I get one for lap swimming, but it's kind of ugly, to be honest with you. Like, so then I pick a pretty one for like vacation on the beach. And then, um, you know, it just, so it just depends. And water park would be something different, like just handy tip, by the way, they don't allow any metal on you. So if you have like metal beads or little hooks or bobbles, they don't allow it at water slides. <laughs> just a handy tip. I'll take off the spikes of my bikini then. <laughs> <laughs> Your metal spike. My metal uh, Madonna yeah. hardware. I'll have to yeah. remove that. Do but you know, it's funny that you said like feeling sexy at the beach. I think that's important too, because we're not always at the beach playing with kids. Sometimes you want to look good. And for me, I know in the past I've packed for my vacations and I felt very like self-conscious at the time. So I brought these like grandma swimsuits for a better word, because I was feeling nervous at the time I was packing. So I ended up packing these like super grandma, practically turtleneck long sleeve swimsuits. And then I got to the beach and all, you know, all the other moms and women were wearing, you know, more attractive looking sexy swimsuits. And I felt stupid that I hadn't brought one because yeah. let's face it, after a cocktail, I was feeling pretty sexy and I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to rock like maybe a cute little sexy suit. So sometimes that's important to think about as you might want different moods, like you're saying. And the great and thing those about, moods change depending yes. on when you're at home versus when you get to your trip or the pool. Yes. And the great thing about swimsuits is they're small. You can pack two or three of them and it doesn't take up any space in your suitcase. So, and also, should we add that as a tip? Just drink alcohol? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Cocktails, by the pool, liquid courage. Nice. Sorry, please don't uh, judge us for that tip, but it does help. You know, sometimes you need to just like say something positive to yourself, do a mantra, have a, you know, a half a beer if you want to, or, or whatever it is you're, you're drinking that day. And then you might feel like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. Let's go. Nothing wrong with that. No, and my, husband, girls. my husband's always good. Like I'll walk out and he'd be like, oh, damn, you look good. <laughs> so that, yeah. That, good for him. That's a good husband. Your whistle is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, so that really helps to to relax. But yeah, and take take multiple swimsuits and buy multiple swimsuits. That's a great tip. What Number two. Second, what was our second one? Oh, um, the second tip that we have for our listeners is to be very honest about your body shape. And I actually got this tip from my daughter. She told me that she just went online and Googled her body shape. You know, everyone knows what, what their body shape is. She just Googled it and then pressed images and all sorts of great suggestions came up that maybe she never thought of. And then she felt more comfortable picking out a style that was already kind of pre-matched to her body type. So I'm wow. like, that's, that's a good idea. I saw on Google too, you could say what body part you want to hide, but say, oh, I don't like my thighs. They'll, and then it'll show up with all these suggestions of the certain type. Like, you know, if you, weirdly, if you have a high thigh one piece, that actually makes your thighs look nicer and longer. So there's little tricks like that you can Google. It's great. Google. Hello, Google. You're a friend. And then similar to what you were saying about how to hide a flaw, because there's nothing wrong with wanting to be a little vain and feel good about yourself. Yeah. I think that's empowering. I, I hope our listeners don't feel like we're saying, oh, you know, feel bad about yourself and hide the yeah. parts you're not proud of. Absolutely not. That's not the case at all. You want to feel empowered and good about yourself so that you can get out there and have fun. And if making, you know, a selection based off of some of these tricks makes you feel stronger and more attractive to yourself, because that's what really matters, then, you know, use these tips. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. you, if you, you know, if you feel great about your sexy body, wear the low rise 
you know, tiny little bikini bottom or wear that, you know, sexy thong or whatever, go for it. Like, we just want you to feel comfortable is the main thing. So think about, you know, your body and what you like best about it and either highlight it or hide it. Whatever, whatever is going to get you at the beach feeling great. That's the whole point. Kind of like opposite of what you're saying about um, de de accentuating your parts you don't like. Another way too is you can accentuate what you like best about your own body. And we're not saying like what other people like about your body. What do you like best about you? The what do you like best about your body? And you can even Google that. Say what's a swimsuit that has a flattering neckline? If you wanted yeah. to like show off the girls, or yeah. if you have great, you feel good about your legs or your rear, you could Google that as well and find some images that would best match. Because I never know. I just go to the store and buy what's on sale. Yeah, which you shouldn't do that. No, I should not, but that's what I do, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> I got to work on this part. I know. Well, I'll be honest with you. I like, I think I want to show off my boobs, but as I get older, you know, they're kind of getting lower and lower. <laughs> so, oh, no. Yeah, but you can find, um, and this is what I do, is I find swimsuits with maybe thicker straps, a little bit more supportive that keep those babies up a little bit. And then I feel great. That's an excellent tip. And I yeah. think that's moving into our, um, you know, moving into one of our, our next tips is that you really have to try on a lot of swimsuits. Wouldn't you agree? That's our third tip is to it's try, like, try, 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 try. Yes. It's like jeans. You know how you, it takes 20 billion times before, you know, try ons before you find the right jeans. Swimsuits are like that. Just, just, it, just go in with it knowing you're going to try on like 15 suits before you find a flattering one. It's just, the way it is. So keep That's that true. in mind. And I get nervous when I go to try on swimsuits. I don't know about you, but it's it's an anxiety producing experience for me. Yeah. So I've learned to go early in the morning when the store first opens, there's nobody there. You know, the fitting rooms are clean. They're not all full of um, the last person's like suits all over the floor. And I feel like I have more patience in the morning. I go by myself. I put my hair up so I don't get hot. Right, and I don't wear makeup because I don't want that smearing all over um, suits when I'm trying to pull them on and off. Um, but that helps me a lot. Do you have any other tips for? Yeah, wear wear underwear, people. Don't be gross. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. <laughs> and yeah. and furthermore, when you wear your underwear, Tamara, you got to wear underwear that might match the swimsuit, right? Yeah. Because I have shown up in my giant granny panties, and then I try on like a cute bikini bottom, and I have like my my big white. You know, let's admit it. We all wear them sometimes. Um, I'll have like my <laughs> my fluffer nut or business poking out like from the sides and the top so you have to <laughs> do like that the fluffer nutter <laughs> clearly i need to watch our underwear episode again but uh -huh. really you want your underwear to match the type of swimsuit you might think that you'll purchase yes and i've almost too just tucked in my underwear you know to try to so you can get a good look at it but so yeah. you know wear underwear you I'm, you might take a friend with you if they're a supportive friend and who who's honest but supportive that will say that one's not so good or this one's okay but keeping your self-esteem intact in if you have that kind of buddy some of us i like to shop alone with swimsuits but i think you had a tip too correct me if i'm wrong about taking a selfie well, I know I'm going against all of our advice about not taking mirror selfies. I remember that was in our picture taking episode, Tamara. Yeah. But for this reason, um, the swimsuit thing, it just feels personal. I don't really have a friend who's willing to sit there with me and give me feedback that I trust. Um, my daughter's pretty good, but other than that, my family is like, yeah, it's fine. Let's go. Let's go, mom. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I find that if I just take a selfie of, you know, of myself in the bikini or whatever, and then I just text it to my friend or text it to my husband, I get a much more honest response because I'm only showing them like three swimsuits to pick from as opposed to like two hours in the fitting room. Because that's even just, not fun for anyone. No, and even just to see yourself differently, like if you take a picture and look at the picture, it feel, I don't know, for some reason I get a better idea of how I look than just looking in the mirror. I know that sounds weird. Nope, but, I'm the same way. I yeah, thought I was so, going to buy this bright yellow swimsuit last year. It was so cute on the hanger with like a black and white striped hat. And then I took a picture. I'm all, oh, hell no. Girl, <laughs> take that off. Like that is not happening with the blonde hair. Like, did you look like a giant bumblebee? I looked like a bee, but I was about to buy it. So thank goodness I snapped a picture real quick because I was like, oh, no, take that off. That's yeah. a great tip. Well, our number four tip is to think outside the box. And Tell me more mean, about that. 
Well, don't just automatically go to your usual department store that has racks and racks of swimsuits. There are so many cool ways and other places to find swimsuits. That, then you'll have a unique suit and maybe one that you that better suits you like. Well, here's a tip is you can just hire a seamstress and take, let's say you have a little shorty shorts and a sports bra that you love and you're like, I'd love to wear that as a swimsuit. You could take it to a seamstress and they'll put a lining in it and it's good to go. And it's like 20 bucks to have the lining sewn in. Um, other stores like surf shops, sporting goods stores, especially if you need a sporty kind of, you know, lap suit. Um, but also for those of you who are, you know, not comfortable with your body or you may be a plus size, there, I, this is a good time because we now have plus size swimsuits that actually look decent for the first time ever. Um, like um, if you're um, like nettles, nettle tails, body positive swimwear um, has some, a whole range. I mean, Lane, Brian, a bunch of them all have awesome lines of swimwear now. Also, there's um, like Tomboy X, which is if you're, if you want an edgier or not your girly girl kind of swimsuit, they're really good. And then another one I suggest is if you really need a modest swimsuit, like you really, really don't want anything showing, Modly is M-O-D-L-I has, they have swimsuits of like with skirts of all different lengths, with shorts, all different lengths, even long sleeve, like you can get like fully covered to nothing on, in that store. So it has a really good, that's a good place really to good go. Like yeah. Those. Yeah. Where do you, do you have any unconventional spot? I do have one unconventional tip. Um, y'all know that I'm really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always on vacation because I like to travel a lot. I love cheap travel. So one thing my family does on vacation for entertainment is we go to thrift stores in beach communities and we have found the best, the best swimsuits at thrift stores because people at hotels, they leave their swimsuits behind like hanging over the rack or in their you know hotel room. So all these expensive swimsuits end up at the uh, thrift store. So I've picked up a ton that way and they're like a dollar or two dollars and it lets me kind of try on different styles without, you know, investing too much money. That's great. I love that. Cheap, cheap and, cheap. yeah. Cheap awesome. and fabulous, right? <laughs> right. Okay, <laughs> you don't get to choose sizes though, but you know what, for a dollar or two, it's kind of worth the risk. That's what I'm saying. What do you have to yeah. lose? What do you have to lose? Okay. I also feel an unconventional tip is when you shop, um, oh. like doing it off season, I think is really helpful. I've, I've made the mistake of waiting until like late in the summer or even once the summer begins before I shop and then you're stuck because everybody's already gone through the racks and there's limited sizes and styles. So shop early, like now yeah. or even in the winter and that way you'll get a better selection. Yeah, because let's see, we're in May. Probably April, early May is probably the best because they're just really well stocked, right? Yep, now's the yeah. time. And then after summer, sometimes you can get the sales that di they didn't sell. And so they'll have a bunch on sale. So like in September, they'll have a big, huge sale and they want to get rid of them. So that's another good time. Totally. Okay, I love uh, tip number five. This is my favorite tip. <laughs> oh, well, well, then... I should have started with this one. I tell you. Okay. Do tell. Um, well, we're talking about embracing the separates. I mentioned earlier, I have 25 plus bikinis in my closet. And a lot of them, or I'd say most of them, are all separate sizes. And what I mean by that is the bottom is like a small medium, but the top is like 34 triple D because I have so much loose, the, so much loose skin, Tamara, from losing weight that um, it all just needs to go somewhere. And so by buying like a plus size top and then a different size bottom, I'm able to get a good fit. And you know, stores do that now, like they didn't used to, like they'd make you buy the set, but now even I think Target had it where you can buy completely separate items. So take advantage of that. Don't, don't go in thinking you need a certain size, just try it on and then, you know, see what happens. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Separates are great. Separates are the way to go. And I know you mentioned some of your favorite places to shop, Tamara, and my two are actually Target, target.com and in stores, and also Victoria's Secret. Um, I have not had implants, but a lot of women have. And those uh, stores, apparently, at Victoria's Secret cater to the larger breasted woman. So if you're looking for a larger top, um, those are a, 
a place that carries like much larger cup sizes. Oh, um, good. Yeah. And they're affordable too, I think, at Target. Yeah. Target at, last year had a great selection. I was like, wow, it was good. Yeah. So I yeah, I recommend bought half of my 25. <laughs> I really do. I actually had to go through and throw some away because it was getting out of control. I like okay. spaces. <laughs> Here's another random you. tip about uh, separates, and this okay. goes back to the underwear tip. You know, I talked about making sure you wear the right tip, uh, right, right style of underwear when you go shopping. Um, but this can be another way to pick out your separates. Like, think about the type of underwear you currently wear and that you're comfortable in. That can be actually a place to start when you're shopping for your separates. So let's say you like to wear boxer underwear, then look for a boxer style swimsuit. If you currently wear a thong underwear, then shop for a bikini bottom, that's a thong. And it's not because it's gonna look good on you, it's because that's what you feel comfortable in. And that's our big message here today is that this swimsuit makeover is all about feeling comfortable and confident and starting with a style you're already used to wearing will already put you in that position. That that's an excellent idea. I love that. And it, come to think of it, my swimsuits do kind of resemble my underwear. <laughs> so do mine. Isn't yeah. that weird? I'm Isn't like, oh, funny? that's me in the pink thong at the beach. Holla, ah. <laughs> <laughs> TMI people. TMI. <laughs> well, our next tip number six is to stay yourself, and by that we mean. There are going to be like major trends happening. I don't know what the trend is this summer, but I think it was like uh, string bikinis were last year. Anyway, who cares? Because what I'm saying is don't worry about that. Actually worry about your personality. Like what, what style do you have in regular clothes? And then just continue that style in your swimsuit. So if you're like an andro androgynous sporty person, then go with a sporty, you know, little sport shorts or something or board shorts or whatever, you know, more athletic style you'll feel comfortable and it'll just reflect you. I mean, you can imagine some people in a, you know, like a thong who would never, who are very conservative, like they'd feel ridiculous. So just go with what your usual style is. You know, if you like, you like hot pink, Stephanie, but I'm not a big, that's not a color I wear a ton of, but um, so I just wear the colors I like and the styles I like. It's hard to tell by the color of your hair, which I is know. so cute. I'm just saying. I know. I this know. is, this Pink is my COVID color. hair. <laughs> you look really good. I like seeing you on camera, Tamara. I know. It's, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. So well, I'm with you because sometimes I'll see the, the style. Like, for example, I remember one year it was all the floral swimsuits. It might have been last year, but I'm, I'm kind of out of style. But <laughs> everybody was wearing floral swimsuits, and I thought, oh, I should buy one because everybody else is buying one. But I, I don't look good in flowers, and I'm glad I avoided that because that's not the look that I would feel comfortable in and confident. So it's important, like you said, to match your personality with um, the type of swimsuit. And who cares if that's the same style you wore last year and the year before and the year before. If it looks good on you and it works for you, stick with it. Don't try to be all trendy. Yeah, it's your signature style. Just call it your signature. And it's your signature style. And the good thing, too, is that with online shopping, you can find your style somewhere. It's out there. Just Google it. Just Google it. Our last tip is to remind yourself of the bigger picture, which is to have fun. Like that's what swimsuits are for. Like that's what they represent to me. It's like frolicking by the water and drinks by the pool and just feeling fabulous and glamorous. So, you know, when you start feeling self-conscious in the dressing room and you start hating on yourself about how you look, just think, no. This piece of cloth is about making me feel fabulous and great, and, and it's my ticket to have fun rather than just an opportunity to beat myself up in the dressing room. So just focus on what it's for, the whole purpose of the swimsuit. I love that. Well, listeners, we hope that you'll send us your swimsuit makeover pictures. You can tag us online on Instagram or Facebook uh, at Dirty Lazy Keto. Um, or you can send us your makeover tips at stephanie at dirtylazyketo.com. Nice. So st yeah. So before we get to our personal favorite hack, Stephanie, why don't we take one more quick break? Perfect. Well, today's episode is brought to you by my new book, Dirty Lazy Keto, Get Started Losing Weight While Breaking the Rules, How I Lost 140 Pounds. 
It is available in paperback, ebook, audiobook, wherever books are sold. I know a lot of our podcast listeners might enjoy the audiobook because it is me talking. I actually do the narration. I am not a professional, so keep that in mind. <laughs> but I'll share my story with you. Dirty, lazy keto, get started. Perfect. Okay. I'll start with my hack, Stephanie. You go first. Okay. So it's, I'm telling you, my hack is to not just look at the swimsuit, look at the things around the swimsuit, the cover up, the shoes, the hairs and the accessories. Cause that's where you can have a lot of fun. And if you are still a little self-conscious with your swimsuit, it's a way to like, um, draw attention to other things beside the swimsuit so like i love a good cover-up like i'm not a big fan of my thighs so i love those cute little wraps you know and you can and they still make you look cute and they're fun you can get like lacy ones you know that are a little bit see-through or silky you can even just take a scarf you have in the closet and use it as a wrap um you can have a big floppy hat some cool sunglasses or giant earrings, whatever, you know, it's, it's a continuation of your personality. So if you're, you know, you're into big accessories, then you should treat your swimsuit that way. But also, it's, I think it's a way to make you just feel more comfortable in your swimsuit. That's a great hack. I tried that with that big hat I was telling you about, the big black and white hat, it didn't work for me. But you're right, they do have some cute accessories, especially near the swimsuit area. So I mm -hmm. love that. Uh, well, Tamara, my hack is to just to just go all in, to embrace your imperfections, to own them, to love them. Um, and what I mean by that is I've learned to love my loose skin. And I've gotten a lot of emails over the years about, did I ever have skin removal surgery? And the answer is no. No, I did not. Instead, I, name, I named my loose skin. Her name is Molly. <laughs> I, I love her. I see her loose skin flopping around when I do uh, push-ups or sit-ups or jumping jacks or water aerobics. Um, she's always with me. My, my, it's like a shadow of my former body. Um, but my favorite part of wearing a swimsuit is not just my loose skin, but it's also seeing my C-section scars. And I had two children this way, but I never saw the scars when I was heavy because I couldn't. I had my uh, tummy in the way, my larger, you know, girth. Um, but now that I can wear a bikini, I can see my C-section scar. And to me, that makes me so proud to put on my swimming suit. I can look down, um, wear a two-piece, I can look down and see that part, uh, which for years I never could see without a mirror. And it makes me feel beautiful and strong and healthy. And I'm very proud of my good health. I'm proud for taking care of myself and I love to put on those swimsuits and strut around and just, you know, celebrate that. Life is wow. short. Life is short. Yeah. Goals. You're my goals because I'm not there yet. <laughs> hey, but before we leave, Stephanie, I want to tell people how they can support us by leaving a quick review on Apple Podcasts. We wanted to just give you a quick overview of how to do that. So on your iPhone, you select the purple podcast icon, and then using the search tool, you type in Dirty Lazy Girls, and then the thumbnail, our little picture of our microphone will pop up. So you click on that, and then you scroll down to the bottom, and it'll say Ratings and Reviews. Click on that, and then you'll get stars, five stars, and you can select how many stars you want to give us, which we hope it's five. <laughs> yes, five, please. And then scroll down and select leave a review. And there you can write some nice comments, which we'll definitely will read and appreciate and let other people know um, about our show. Because the more comments are on there, um, the more they'll know. Thank you for that reminder, Tamara. And in the spirit of leaving reviews, we got the most wonderful review today from Deb in Denver, Colorado. She shared in her review. She says, thank you, thank you for being the brave women that you are by educating and reminding all of us that we don't have to be strict to be successful. Um, we can do what works best for us. She says she would not have been able to begin her journey without our help, ideas, suggestions, and motivations. She says she loves the books, the cookbooks, and the podcast. Big thank you to all of your hard work you have put into these projects. 
you talk about so many feelings and beliefs that totally resonate with me. She knows she's not the only one. And Deb goes on to say she's lost 25 pounds and she's feeling different, acceptable, enjoyable. Yes, she says she has carboholic moments, but she feels like um, the podcast and Dirty Lazy Keto has given her so much encouragement to know she can do this. And by the way, Deb has 12 grandchildren. Wow. Good job, Deb. So thank Deb, you. this episode's for you. And thank you for leaving that honest review. And we really appreciate you listening and your support.